I have a bad feeling about this. Burkhardt disease, or thromboangitis obliterans, is a unique form of vasculitis where the most significant risk factor is the history of heavy tobacco smoking. It's the only vasculitis in which smoking plays crucial role. In Burger disease, chronic exposure to nicotine and other chemicals which are contained in tobacco can lead to a segmental thrombosis vasculitis with vein and nerve involvement. So, let's explain how smoking can lead to such dramatic consequences. Initially, let's discuss how thrombus is formed. What does that got to do with anything? Everything! So, when person inhales tobacco, nicotine and other chemicals enter into the bloodstream. Hey kid, how you boys doing? Hey, keep chilling. Nicotine and tobacco chemicals can cause damage to endothelial cells, which initially leads to endothelial cell dysfunction, and over time can even cause apoptosis of endothelial cells. Intentions, really. I never. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, did I break your concentration? It is important to note that nicotine and tobacco chemicals can cause endothelial damage in anyone, but the severity of this damage varies from person to person. Now, let's assume that we have a predisposed individual who is particularly vulnerable to nicotine and tobacco chemicals, so it's the first risk factor. And in addition to this, he is a chronic smoker. This is getting out of hand. Now there are two of them. In this case, chronic exposure to nicotine and other chemicals can cause severe endothelial injury. With injury, endothelial cells release massive amount of pro-inflammatory cytokines. In turn, pro-inflammatory cytokines recruit to the site of inflammation pro-inflammatory cells, as neutrophils, T-lymphocytes and macrophages. Once neutrophils, lymphocytes, and macrophages become activated, they begin to massively infiltrate the site of inflammation. Important that inflammation in this case affects only endothelium and subendothelium. So in Burger disease, inflammation is superficial. The inflammatory process here do not reach internal elastic lamina. But there is a second problem. Recall that endothelial cells contain von Willebrand factor, and the function of von Willebrand factor is to provide aggregation of platelets. So, when nicotine and other chemicals cause injury to endothelial cells, with damage, endothelial cells release von Willebrand factor into the circulation. This massive release of von Willebrand factor creates a prothrombotic state. In addition to this, with damage to endothelial cells, subendothelial collagen becomes exposed. And we know that exposed subendothelial collagen attracts platelets. But platelets cannot bind to subendothelial collagen directly. They need a linkage molecule. And this linkage molecule is von Willebrand factor. And now we have severe endothelial cell injury and we have a lot of von Willebrand factor molecules. In these circumstances, von Willebrand factor molecules bind to subendothelial collagen, thereby inducing platelet aggregation. And aggregation of platelets on subendothelial collagen with time results in formation of a large thrombus, which obturates the lumen of the blood vessel. So, let's briefly review this step. Burker disease has three phases. In the acute phase, inflammation causes formation of intraluminal inflammatory thrombus, and usually this process spares blood vessel wall. In subacute phase, thrombus begin to organize, and in chronic phase, fibrotic thrombus forms. In all phases, internal elastic lamina is preserved, 
so inflammation is limited only to the endothelium and subendothelium. But why are these pathological changes in the blood vessel are so dangerous? I don't know. That's a good question. Here we have small or medium-sized artery. The function of arteries is to supply blood to tissues. In this case, let's take a peripheral tissues as extremities, simply because they are extremely sensitive to any changes in blood flow. So, let's suppose that this blood vessel delivers blood to arms and legs. From physiology, recall that blood flow is directly proportional to pressure difference and inversely proportional to resistance. And resistance is inversely proportional to the force power of radius. So, we know that in Burger disease, tobacco smoking induces endothelial and subendothelial injury. Injury to endothelium results in local inflammation and formation of a thrombus. The problem with thrombus is that it causes decrease in radius of the blood vessel. And from physics, we know that with decrease in radius, resistance increases, And with increase in resistance, blood flow decreases. Reduced blood delivery to peripheral tissues causes ischemic state in the extremities. Initially, ischemia in extremities may manifest as pain during physical activity. But if blood vessel obstruction becomes more severe, ischemia worsens, and now person will experience pain even at rest. In addition to this, chronic ischemia leads to the formation of ischemic ulcers, which greatly increase the risk of secondary infections. And also, thrombus formation predisposes to Raynaud's phenomenon. So what is it, Raynaud's phenomenon? In normal state, our blood vessels provide adequate blood flow to skin which gives skin a normal, slightly pinky color. In Burger disease, thrombus creates an obstruction to blood flow, which causes decrease in blood delivery to the skin. But blood flow may still be enough to maintain this pinky color. The problems begin when the second factor, which can induce further constriction, appear. And the most common such factor is called weather. The reason is that cold temperature causes constriction of the blood vessels, especially in the fingers. With constriction, blood flow decreases, and low blood income to fingers gives skin white appearance. With time, prolonged decrease in blood delivery to the fingers creates hypoxic state, which gives skin bluish color. And when the constriction resolves, and blood flow becomes restored, Income of blood back to the fingers creates red color. How can this be? So, here we can see diagnostic criteria. Burger disease typically affects people 30 to 50 years old. The major predisposing factor is tobacco use. The major clinical symptoms are claudication, rest pain, and digital ulceration. Superficial thrombosis has migrating pattern. So, initially, thrombosis can affect right arm, but after some period of time, left leg can be affected, even if thrombosis in the right arm is resolved. So, inflammation and thrombosis in this case has migrating feature. Burger disease typically affects distal arteries and we can find the thrombosis of the distal arteries on angiography. On right image, we can see that thrombus cause obstruction to the blood flow, because we do not see the small artery that should supply finger tissue. So, let's summarize. Typically, a patient with Burger disease is a person with a history of heavy tobacco smoking who presents with intermittent claudication and chronic ulcers, which can lead to a gangrene. If a young person has amputations of digits and history of heavy tobacco smoking, it's also very suspicious of Burger disease. Because the first stage in Burger disease is inflammation that leads to formation of a thrombus, this disorder can present a superficial nodule of phlebitis. 
Renault phenomenon is also the characteristic feature. And unfortunately, the treatment is smoking cessation. Is that a fact? No, no, it's not a fact. It's just what I heard. It's just what I heard. Who told you? They. What will happen if patient will continue to smoke? The chances that one of the limbs will be amputated is about 25% per 5 years, and the risk progressively increases with time. So in 20 years, there is 40% chance that one of the limbs will be amputated, which is a pretty strong argument to stop smoking. That's a damn shame. Also statistically, the major risk factor is the duration of smoking. So the longer you smoke, the higher is the chance that something will go wrong. But still, I have to say, you play with matches, you get burned. What do you mean? So, if patient wants to save all his limbs, he better stop smoking. Otherwise, things will go dramatic. What is it? But also, keep in mind that one of the chemicals that provokes Burger disease is nicotine. So, substitution of cigarettes with smokeless chewing tobacco does not work. It won't decrease the risk of adverse outcome. Another happy landing. May the force be with you.